Hello everybody, it's Joe back at the workbench and making videos again. I hope everybody had a happy break, I know I did. While I was on break, one of the coolest things that has ever happened in 3D printing in the world happened. This wrench that you're seeing right here was emailed to space and built on a 3D printer up there. This is the space wrench sent by NASA up to the International Space Station so that they could tighten bolts. If your mind is not blown, I mean seriously. Now, when I first heard this and they made this wrench available, I said, I have to print this. I have to hold in my hands the same wrench that went to space. And then I got to looking at it and I realized, well, I really don't need to, I don't, I don't kind of don't need to own it, but I can talk about it because it does a lot of really cool stuff. So let's take a look at this uh, in Blender a little bit. Um, I'm going to show you a quick trick in Blender. When you first import a model, you can see all the lines that make it up, but if you enter edit mode with tab and exit it, uh, it cleans up, like, if the faces are close to each other, it just kind of gets rid of the line between them. So you kind of get this x-ray mode. So we can see here that there is a couple of different parts, and we're just going to go into edit mode and separate the parts so that we can look at them individually. So there's, there's the ratchet, there's, or there's the, uh, I don't know what the name for this thing is. I, I, I should pretend to know the names for these things. This is the spinny roundy part. This is the clickety clackety part. And this is the handle that holds it all together. <laughs> Let's look at them one at a time. The, handle, the handle's not that interesting. It's just uh, got a bunch of holes. However, it should be noticed that it's got a hole in the bottom. And it's got a hole in the bottom here. Uh, it's got a hole for access here. And then it relies on bridging here. But the bridging is well, not bad. I'm, I'm, I, I know that the bridging works because it worked in the International Space Station. Many people have printed this out. So it's good. It follows the YHT rules because the 3D printer in the International Space Station is more like my 3D printer than the big expensive machines that have dual nozzles and support material and cost $300 per cubic centimeter to make. It's it's a very simple 3D printer they have up there. And so they have to follow the same rules that I have to follow when I build stuff. So this will print successfully on my 3D printer because of that. Let's let's take a look at let's take a look at these two parts simultaneously, okay? So this is the ratchety ratchet. And oh, let me back out again and look at the bottom here. Notice how that access allows it to to touch and it just barely Let's go back into local mode. The bottom of this ratchety ratchet part just kind of barely touches. In fact, it's got like a, uh, oh, what do we got here? Like 0.6? It's a little bit tight. I would have done it at least 0.8, but I, I'm not, I'm not better than the guys at NASA. Uh, actually, I noticed something when I was looking at this. So let's go back out of, of this mode here and look at this. So this ratchety ratchet part, let's rotate around a 3D cursor and move 3D cursor here. This guy right here uh, comes off, but you see this little, this little bit right here? That's a spring that kind of pushes against it and pushes it back and, push it and pushes it back. But check this out. This spring is one millimeter across. Now, do you remember on my YHT video where I said, when you're doing wall thickness, 0.8 is good, 0.16 is good, but anything between 0.8 and 0.16 will mess up most slicers. And most slicers will just do the two walls and they'll leave a gap in between. At one millimeter, it does the two walls and it leaves a gap in between. But that's perfect if you want this thing to flex. So the NASA engineers actually took advantage of the slicers problems to make a good good spring for their doohickey. I mean, how cool is that? This is what happens when you hand actual engineers uh, uh, who have eight hours a day to work on this stuff, the sort of 3D printer like I have. Now, I want to also point this out. Uh, this, this spinny part doesn't have a peg and a hinge that it's holding onto, and there's no bearings. It's just floating in this hole that's perfectly crafted for it. Notice how this part right here is, is 
overhung at almost exactly 45 degrees, maybe exactly 45 degrees, and this part's falling away so that there's a little gap of air, and then they go up together, and now this part's doing the overhang thingy, and this part's following away, but there's still a gap between them. So these print separately, but nested. I used this trick a long time ago in a, in a model that I made, this guy right here, it's a uh, it's a decoder ring. It's got the ABCs around it, and you twist it, and you can do a Caesar cipher with it. But the two rings print. Oh, I gotta go in and out of edit mode again. Uh, they print like that. You know, one does the overhang while the other one falls away, and then the other does the overhang while the other one falls away. And there's, I guess, I better go in and separate them so that we can, you know, talk about that. Um, and so they manufacture at the same time, nested together, and can't be taken apart. Well, I lost my print of this one, and I should reprint it, but they can't be taken apart once they're put together. It's very difficult to manufacture like this using traditional methods, but it's trivial for 3D printing, and it allows the creation of this wrench, where, where this bad boy right here is allowed to rotate freely inside the hole that's created for it. How cool is that? NASA engineers doing what, you know, now they have the same limitations I do and they're doing awesome things. The one criticism that I could give this wrench is the fact that it only tightens. You notice the ratchet only goes one way and as as this rotates around, this spring here uh, only allows it to go one way and it doesn't allow it to go the other way. So it's a ratcheting wrench that only tightens. If you wanted to, to uh, you know, make one that would loosen, it would be easy enough to just mirror it and then flip it around um, and then print it out and you could have one for tightening and one for loosening. That seems a bit silly to me, but it, you could totally do that. It's not a problem at all to do that. Uh, the only way you'd really know the difference between them is that this one's writing is backwards. You know, actually, if you were clever, what I'd do is I'd write righty and lefty, but then I'd mirror lefty, so when you mirrored the whole thing, lefty got unmirrored, and you could read lefty and righty would be mirrored, and that way you'd know which one's which. That's what I'd do for it, because I'm crazy like that. But the other thing, I, mean, I, don't, I wonder why NASA engineers didn't try and figure out a mechanism for flipping it back. And maybe they did, and maybe they didn't have, you know, you're, there, you're up against a deadline, and this is a lot of work to do. Maybe there will be another iteration that has a little flip, a little toggle in it, they'll flip it from one way to the other. I can hope so. That would be cool. Uh, still, this is super awesome. I mean, it got emailed to space and manufactured in space. So cool, man. We're living in the future. I absolutely love it. This is a this is a beautiful piece of work. Beautiful, a piece of art, really. It's fantastic. So, guys, hey, we're living in the future. Hey, thank you guys for watching. The channel continues to grow, and I can't be more excited. You guys are the wind beneath my wings. And if you have anything that you want me to talk about in the coming weeks, be sure to leave a comment, and I'll work it into the rotation. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this has inspired some of you to do something awesome. And just keep making awesome stuff. Thank you.